The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. We kick things off. Non-farm payroll is Friday, and we got quite an ad. You're talking about a number, 272,000 jobs added in the month of May. Quite a beat. You're talking about a beat of every single economist over there on Bloomberg. I think it had 72. Beat them all. The number they were looking for, maybe 150, maybe 170. They committed 272 when you talk about revisions for the prior months. Only down about 15,000 for the prior two months, so a huge blowout number. There's the reaction right out of the gate. A brief spike, not sure what did that, to 53.80. Maybe just saying, hey, the economy's doing great. It is doing great, but we're never going to get rate cuts at this pace, folks. You got wage gains going up 0.4% on the month, and I think a number greater than 4% on a year-over-year -year basis. Huge wage growth, and you have the unemployment rate at 4% right now. 53.80 was the spike. That was short-lived. We drive down to 53.30. We're getting a little bit of a lift from there. S&P is still negative by 15 points right now. That's a decline of three-tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, right now we're off by 36. You see the volatility there as well. We're back above 19,000. You got the Dow right now off 93 points, 38,862. And the Russell off by 23, 2029. You jump over to Bitcoin, up 700 bucks, a little bit of volatility in both directions. You got crude right now. Up? Oh, did I not get my chart? Shame on me. We better get those charts over there, folks. Thanks for telling me, my producer Al. Uh, jumping back real quick. There's your S&P S and volatility. Brief spike. We dive down. We're at 53.47. You jump over to that crude market. You got crude this morning, 75.50. We're up above 76 briefly. We jump over to gold. That's a mess. All the way up to. 2406 all the way down to 2330 we're trading at 2341 you got gold technically down 49 dollars right now on the session for gold and that's going to tie in to of course notes and bonds and the dollar oops that's not what we want we want zn there's your action on the 10-year we get the 10-year yield right now yielding three excuse me not three 4.41 4.41 we were at about 4.3. So you're talking about 11 basis points to the upside. You have lower price, higher yield in the 10-year. We have a whole cut basically getting priced out this year alone. And there's some action in the dollar. You talk about it, man. From 104.10 to 104.71, everybody wants dollars when we're never going to be giving it up on rates right now. And I'm exaggerating, of course. But that seems to be the theory today as you get this market. Well, what's interesting is... You know, yesterday, this is where you want to keep perspective in things, right? What was the risk-reward going into this jobs number? Well, the risk-reward was a scenario just like this in almost both directions. The risk-reward is the market was already pricing in that everything was weakening. You had the 10-year rising from 107 to above 110. We came into this number at 110.03. We had yields, okay? I mean, check this out. I'm just going to pull this over real quick. We had yields. When you just look at the yield, all right, let's zoom in on three-month. We just had the yield go from 4.62 to 4.3, 4.28, okay? The risk was that that narrative was not going to play out. If that narrative played out, it was already priced in. A quarter point was already priced in from May 29th to where we were on June 5th, okay? So what happened? Well, that narrative didn't play out. The slowdown is not there. Jobs are coming in everywhere, and um, let me know if you have my chart, Al. I believe you do. And, yeah, we go from there. All right. Now, let's turn around, jump around to some of, thank you, some of the data that we got from this number. I love the Bloomberg live feeds that they go through here. And let's see. So jobs are widespread. I just want to cherry pick some of the numbers here. Yeah, there it was, 77 estimates. And, uh 
272,000, beat them all. The government added 43,000. Healthcare was a huge one, 68,000 in the healthcare sector. You have yields spiking across the board. Yeah, only a small revision in the prior two months. 15,000 fewer jobs created for the revisions from March and April. So no real huge revisions across the board. They give you a snapshot of what we have going on. Wage gains, 0.4% on a monthly basis, double the pace of the average hourly earnings advance the previous month. That might be the biggest headline there. On a month-over-month -month basis, you have wage gain accelerating. Not what the Fed wants to hear this morning. Yeah, so you have the 10-year up, 13 basis points. Now, it is interesting. The household survey. Now, as they put it, remember, there are two surveys for the report. The establishment, that's for the payrolls, and then the household survey for the unemployment rate. The household survey shows a big drop in employment, 408,000. We've seen this many times over the past couple of years. As Bloomberg says, I read, a big payroll gain juxtaposed with an unemployment loss in the household survey household survey ultimately the payroll figures seem to capture the underlying dynamic but against a backdrop of a number of signs of easing in the labor market including the slide of job openings the drop in the household survey adds to that narrative interesting right you almost got something uh, as always a little bit of something for everybody in this report yeah they talk about the household unemployment you got the participation rate unexpectedly slumping to 62.5%. That's not what you want. Not what you want at all. You want the participation rate going up right now. They talk about the unemployment rate in here. Yeah, you got the two surveys in here. Unemployment back up to 4%. No more three handle on the unemployment rate. You got yields rising. Yeah. Earnings growth, 4.1% on a year-over-year -year basis. That might be the story even. You know, if you, you focus on the jobs, yeah, two, 272,000 is quite a number. But whichever inflation gauge you look at, they're all under 4.1%. Households are rebuilding purchasing power. Do you hear that? As long as people are making more money than the inflation rate, they're going to add to their purchasing power. That is not what the Fed is supposed to be achieving right now to begin getting a control over the inflation that we have raging across the board. Yeah, pretty startling, man, when you take a look at those numbers, right? 4.1% and 0.4% on a monthly basis. 0.4%. You have to remember, folks, that we're dealing with numbers now that are just very high in terms of the benchmark, right? Remember, it was all going to be like, oh, well, inflation has been so high. Wage growth has been so high that when you go a year out, the benchmark is going to be very difficult to still see these types of gains when you're benchmarking against such a high level on a year-over-year -year basis. We're still blowing it out of the water. But hey, we'll see what happens in the market today. You've seen it happen before. The first move is always not the move that always holds. We're catching a little bit of a lift. You got the S&Ps already 17 points off the low of 53.30. And where are we sitting? We're sitting basically at the lows intraday yesterday. That's all we're at. Nothing catastrophic right now. We're sitting where we were at 2 o'clock p.m. yesterday. We're down 16 points, only 3 tenths percent in the S&Ps. Let's take a look at some of the poster boys. NVIDIA shares. How about that move yesterday? 12.55. NVIDIA, we dropped today. We're trading down a bit to 11.89. We jump over to Amazon shares. They're off about 50 pennies right now to 184.41. Apple shares this morning. They're off as well. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. This market's clawing back right now. We got the S&Ps down just 12 points, 5351. You get the NASDAQ only off 28. Look at that pop. We're back above 19,000. As I mentioned, you were down all the way to 18,940. We're almost 100 points off of the low there. You get the Dow right now, negative by 44 points, 38,910. And let's jump around as I was at the beginning of the show, uh, coming into that break. Excuse me. NVIDIA shares down about 10, 15 bucks. Man, this thing is just a rocket ship. 1250. 12.55 yesterday. I mean, look at this thing, man. Absolutely remarkable. You jump over, excuse me, some of the other Magnificent 7 Apple shares trading at almost 195. They're basically flat on the session right now. They were higher pre-market. Jump over to Amazon shares. They're almost flat as well. No real huge reaction. And you can't deny it, folks, because here's what's going to be interesting here, is that are we really going to get a bid in the market once the economy really begins to weaken to the point where the Fed needs to cut, that's what you want to be careful with here, okay? There's a whole premise that once the Fed begins to cut, rates will ease, the cost of capital will become cheaper, jo companies will enjoy that, the dollar will weaken, and their prices will go up. But you have to realize that that's going to come with a weakened economy. And what's been driving this market right now is earnings in dramatic fashion. And so that's the one thing you really want to keep your eyes on, man, because I don't really believe the narrative that once really, you know, the economy falls apart, 
and we're not adding jobs and there's no wage gains that somehow all the equities are going to go up you got to take a look at this chart in the S&Ps folks okay take a look at this chart and think to yourself for a moment that we just traded from 4100 in October we're in June we're trading at 5300 and the premise here for some is that once the economy begins to weaken, we might get a lift because of decreasing rates. And I am not sure that's the case. So you may see the market pop today um, because the economy is relentlessly, relentlessly strong. 272,000 jobs added. We got wage gains that are exceeding whatever inflation gauge you pick, PCE, CPI. And, and yeah, and now we have... Uh, we do have rates going down. We have the dollar spiking higher. Dollar just under 104.7, quite a spike there. You see, still well off. We got some room, man, if this really makes a change to run. We were just trading at 104.7 almost a month ago. And we're at 104, excuse me, we were just trading at almost 107. We were trading at 106.50 at the beginning of May. And we're at 104.70 right now from where we are. Pretty remarkable. All right, we jump over to gold. Gold. Now, you could make the case you're just chopping around this area, right? Between about 2,300 and 2,400. You were at the higher end of that range coming into this number. Now, gold was already down dramatically coming into the jobs number. I mean, we were already trading at 830 at what? 2,352. So a lot of this drop is basically overnight. And that had to do with China. So China here, the story is that bullion now this is from the bloomberg live feed on the jobs but they mentioned gold took another leg down but it was already down after data showed that china's central bank did not buy any gold in may that snaps an 18-month buying spree many had speculated that strong central bank purchases drove prices this year as they looked to diversify for a myriad of reasons from de-dollarization to haven demand and even the global interest rate dynamic okay uh and they make the case here that today's drop looks steep on a three-day chart because you're down 50 bucks. But as I just showed, you put this thing on a daily, and we're not down at all, okay? We're just back to where we were three days ago. We're just in the choppering around range. And so, yeah, you know, if you're in gold and you're not willing to withstand a lot of heat here, make sure you put a stop in there at some point because you break below 2,300. Where's your next level? 22 right away. Where's the one after that? 21. It's a 100-point range, man. You can see, right? You go back to December. That was an area 21. December 21. You make it in February 2074 or so. What did you make it do? 283. And then the next stop was 2200. And then the area is 23. And right now we're down $48 for that gold contract. Quite a move, man. Quite a move indeed. But, yeah, I wouldn't look for a complete demise of this market, man. You may see rates adjust, okay? You may see rates adjust. You're definitely going to see... The probability of cuts coming down the line adjust. That's for sure. Okay, There's been no recoil in the 10-year, yet there has been a recoil in the markets. Earnings have been driving this market, folks. Be careful that when you eventually get a shift, if the Fed really puts a hamper on this economy, be careful in thinking that that's somehow going to help equities. Because right now, good news is almost good news. And I know we're down 15 points in the S&P. But keep things in context. We're down 15 points in the S&P, and we're trading at record prices right now. That's it. You know, yeah, you were at 53.80. That's an all-time high print in the S&P, I believe. Is it? It is. You just got an all-time high print on the S&P, and we are eight points. What was the high there? 53.68. So we're 20 points off the all-time high that was made on May 23rd outside of three days ago. You traded to a high of 53.68 on June 5th. Okay, context is important. We are trading at all-time highs in this market right now. So, yeah, you might think that we're getting a little bit of a recoil to negative prices. But bottom line is, this economy is strong. The market is okay with that right now. We're able to handle rates. I mean, the 10 years only at 4.4%, folks. This is not bonkers numbers that strong companies in the type of growth that we're experiencing cannot handle. They can handle these numbers. The market shows it. The prices show it. And if you ever get a rollover, that's, I think, where you want to be careful. I, re I, th I really think that you want to be careful. If we ever look for a jobs number that really gets smacked in the face to the downside and there's no more wage growth and people losing their jobs and real estate's in trouble, 
the market's not going to like that. So I think um, I'd be careful on today's move and thinking that we're going to drive down to lower prices because, yeah, we may not get a lift to higher prices, but we're sitting at all-time highs relatively. All right. We got to check in on Roaring Kitty. Quite a day for GameStop yes, stop yesterday and quite an overnight session. Up to $67 overnight and down to $37. My goodness. The meme stocks are back, folks. Now, what you have here is that you have GameStop. They dropped 19% after the retailer posted a 29% sales decline. Are we talking fundamentals here? Because they don't belong in this conversation. I mean, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but they really don't. The video game retailer posted net sales of $881 million, down 29%. There was no earnings call here, I believe. Sales declined steeper than the two analysts who cover the stock. God bless them two Wall Street analysts that cover this stock and talk about the fundamentals when the stock's performance has nothing to do with the fundamentals whatsoever. Uh, net sales of $881 million, down 29% from $1.237 billion a year earlier. Yeah, and the um, the ranges there were $900 million to one09 so even below that. They lost $32.3 million during the quarter. The market thought they might lose $50 million. Nonetheless, another wild day. All right, stay tuned, folks. We're going to come back. Our man Jacob Shoup, he's going to be joining us after the break. Don't go the away. The consistency we'll you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, Jacob Shoup. How are we doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you doing? 
I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks for joining. Totally. Uh, so what do you think about this jobs number? Quite okay. a number, man. It, insane. I mean, the yeah. non-farm payrolls was so hot. And I think, you know, this is something I've been I've been saying when I come on and, and fill in a little bit. I This economy is still pretty strong in some major ways, right? And the Fed still has a lot to go. I mean, you have unemployment d- does tick up, right? Which is, you know, something. Right? We're at 4% from 39 but I mean, you know, non-farm payrolls being at 272, and that's in thousands, versus the expected 185 is intense. Uh, and, and this is what I say. I mean, what we're talking about, what, a September job or a September rate cut now? And I don't see something like that. And maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. What do you think? Well, you know, I keep going back to the fundamentals and trying to cut out all the rhetoric. Yeah. And, you know, I had a great conversation with Teddy Kegstad on Wednesday talking about, you know, the media, they want the cut kind of. And, you know, there is a lot of rhetoric. The market would love a cut. Right. So there's a lot of pressure there. But if you really think about the Fed has two mandates. Right. They have a mandate of full employment and price stability. That's it. Well, who is making the case right now that full employment is in question? Right. So the only thing they should be focusing on is price stability, in my opinion. And you look at the wage numbers, man. Year over year, 4.1% wage growth. Month over month, 0.4% wage growth. <laughs> yeah. Why would you need a cut right now? Now, you know, the Agreed. argument against that, okay, is that if you're late to the party, then you're too late. And if the damage is done and the Fed has to play catch up, then they're late to the party and the damage is already done, the economy is weakened, then they'd have to come in in a, in a you know, in a stance of weakness, right? As in to save a, a weakening economy, you want to come in right at the right point. But, boy, it is very difficult to peg that moment, and I think we're all still dealing with inflations. And when you look at the numbers on a year-over-year basis, I mean, what's crazy right now is the benchmark numbers are so high, right? Think, we've had wage growth now for two years solid, big numbers, and still we're growing 4% year-over-year. Month over month, we're growing 0.4%, and think about the benchmark numbers, and still we can't get it under control. So I think, you know, you're right that – you know, maybe, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm sure they want to, they don't want to be late to the party, but boy, they don't want to be early, man, because That's the problem. You, you, yeah. you see these numbers and, and, you know, ADP gave us all a little bit of hope, I think, on Wednesday, and yeah. I don't want to call it even hope, but the, the bond market definitely thought it gave us some hope, man, the way the 10-year went down from, you know, May 29th, you right. had a 10-year yield of 4.62%. We came into this number at like 428 <laughs> I mean, just a dramatic pullback. This market is looking for any signs to bring that yield down. And then we get a number that's 272,000. And we get it with some serious wage growth, man, which is just a big factor that's going to continue, I think. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the problem. The the idea that this, this market is pushing itself higher on these promises, right, that lower rates are coming in. But every time we get something come out, I mean, you get one good number in it, and it skyrockets. And even when you get uh, numbers that might say that the Fed needs to go higher for longer, you can still get some positive upward pressure because it's like, well, it can't last forever. But that that can be kind of dangerous, I think, right? And say we get to yeah. September now. I mean, we were supposed to get rate cuts in June at the beginning of this year. We were supposed to get year. six or seven this year at one point. <laughs> right. Remember that conversation? Absolutely. My goodness, right? And yeah. I, don't, I don't see a, a path forward in September, mainly because there's not even enough months to establish that we're hitting a, a, yeah. a decent enough trajectory, right? I mean, the Fed needs a you know a few months to see. Okay, this right. is hitting where we're at, and, and you're so right. I mean, you don't want to be late to the party, but the, the major problem is if you are early to this, then you're going to get even stronger inflation than you had prior, and that becomes a massive issue, especially because Oof. they only can affect demand side, right? And yeah. coming from COVID, a lot of it, you know, I mean, there's so much more that goes into this than just, you know, the demand and supply side. But um, yeah, regardless, I I think they can get themselves into a really big problem if they lower rates too soon. I agree. And it's just really as simple as why. If you're sitting at a table and you cut out all the rhetoric, right? And you're sitting in September and somebody said, we need to cut rates. Say why? Why? Yeah. Right. You know why? Like this market is on fire. It is. Like this is this is a a remarkable bull market right now obviously the market can handle the rates where they are right now and you know i i think maybe the the risk to this market is not actually like i was stating that we actually start getting those cuts uh excuse me that that, yeah it's it's that the risk is not that somehow we don't get the cuts right the risk is actually that 
somehow <clears throat> things go wrong and we need the cuts because we don't need the cuts right now. And the market's Correct. like, we're cool, man. <laughs> we're, we're making Boku bucks. Um, AI is put a you know, new revolution into the growth stocks out here. And, you know, the earnings, I mean, you, you look at NVIDIA, okay? And yeah. <laughs> one of the most yeah. remarkable things from NVIDIA that I hear, and I'm generalizing <laughs> the numbers, is that, you know, the stock is up, you know, whatever it is, right? A thousand percent over the last couple of years or something. And over that period of time, the multiples for earnings have actually gone down because they're making so much money. Yeah. So it's it's not this like, you know, dream boat built off no revenue story. There are earnings that yeah. are driving this market right now. And if those earnings disappear, I don't think rate cuts are going to save this market. So that's where I put a little bit of, um, you know, just to keep that to keep that thought because i mean nvidia man i always i look at that equity and everybody does but boy some of those margins right jacob when they're pulling in what are they making like 70 percent on huge. some of those margins it's like my what a business man to be selling chips for thirty thousand dollars and you're making twenty thousand to the <laughs> bottom line yeah that is not a that's not how you know the the dot-com bubble was made man this is real and if that starts to go away and the Fed needs to cut because that starts to go away, I don't know if that will save the market. The 10-year is only at 4.4%, right? In context, right. that's not a crazy number when you think about the type of numbers that these companies are making. Yeah. Good point. Good point, hey, for sure. We'll Seriously. see where we play out. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, the market's down today. But as I was saying at the beginning of the program, we're down 20 points. <laughs> yeah. But we're sitting basically at record highs, yeah, man. Right, right. I mean, you know, yeah, the yeah, stock... Right. We're up, we're up, what? We're up 50% from where this thing was 18 months ago in October, even a little bit more than that, I guess. October of 2022, we're at 3,500. We're up 1,850 points from there. You, you, you know, I'm cherry picking the lows. Even the high last year was 4,600. We're up, what, 700 points from there. We're up almost 20% from the intra year high of July last year. And then if you back things up, and this is just, you know, you got to keep these numbers in context, folks. We came into COVID when everybody was like, the market's doing so well, right? Oh, and COVID's mm -hmm. going to screw up all this goodness. We came into COVID at 3,200. We're trading at 5,344 right now. I mean, you, you, it's just so, you know, all yeah. things. This market's remarkably strong. And we have a yield that the market's gotten used to, man. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, don't, don't get too bamboozled by the fact that we get a strong economy. And somehow we need cuts because how do you make that case? And Kim, bring it back to that that simply yeah. because I think Chairman Powell, man, I keep going back and I've mentioned it before, Jacob, I think even to you, that 60 Minutes, go watch that 60 Minutes Big interview time. that Powell did, folks. And I, it's months ago now. But that one phrase that he said, we want to go back to where nobody's talking about inflation. And we are so far from that, man. When he said that, nobody's talking about inflation. Oh, my God, that's going to take <laughs> right. like feels like, right? And we're not even close to that yet, man. And this jobs number is another wake up, I think, for sure. Right on. Well, we'll be right back, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, welcome back, Tommy. You were talking about NVIDIA. I don't know if you have anything you want to speak about in particular, but you're just bringing up the case about NVIDIA. Things are earnings yeah. driven, which is a great point. How about <clears throat> Rivian's new pickup trucks using NVIDIA chips? That is uh, pretty impressive. And they have a you great know, price point, too. I mean, you got to love the fact if you're sitting in any boardroom and you say, we're, we're struggling right now as a company, we're struggling right now as an industry <laughs> in EVs, yeah. why don't we come out and say, hey, we're going to use NVIDIA chips? Um, and, you know, I'm a little bit sarcastic in that but yeah um so rivian they're redesigning all electric R r1 pickups and suvs they're going to add nvidia chips and improve performance uh, and that says it all so their pricing for the second generation of the r1s suv is going to increase a thousand bucks from the current models it's going to start at 75.9 the top end's 106,000. but you know and listen, these are cool vehicles, man. I don't know if yes, you've seen one of these, Jacob. Have. have you seen them? They're, they look awesome. They're man. nice, uh, big time. Um, but boy, I'm and I, I at one point, and I tell the story. So I bought a BMW five years ago, and at that time, I said to myself, you know, this because because at that time, folks, in 2018, 19, Elon was out there saying that they're going to have self-driving fleets in a year or two or something, right? right. So I was like, all right, <laughs> maybe in five years, this might be the last gas-powered vehicle i buy this and then maybe evs taking over the world in five years not not a crazy thought at the time um but i'm and and so i was thinking then okay maybe i'll look at a, an ev after this right and right now i am so skeptical because it seems like every time you step into one of these vehicles before you know it a year or two down the road the resale value is just getting clobbered. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's really, you know, how do they compete on that, man? And I saw, you know, just, you know, social media meme type, you know, reels and stuff like that. But boy, a Rivian as well. Some of these vehicles, if you bought a Rivian a year or two ago, man, just like Tesla, the whole market, you've gotten absolutely clobbered. <laughs> and they're very expensive vehicles. I mean, still, you're talking about seventy to $100,000 right now for a vehicle. You know, and it is so... It's so tough to rationalize. I just it's so tough Agreed. to rationalize spending a hundred thousand dollars on a vehicle. I mean, folks, I know housing prices are up, okay? But <clears throat> I'm in Lakeland, Florida, okay, and they are building brand new houses in Lakeland, Florida, <laughs> where you can get a brand new house right now for three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Okay. Now yeah, you're a little bit out from the city, okay? I love Tampa. I love being close to Tampa. You can't get a brand new house in the city at three hundred thousand anymore, let alone if you go near Boston or something like that. 
But in that context, I say, you know, that's just um, we all know that spending money on new vehicles is a quick way to burn money. And at one hundred thousand dollars, even at 70, very difficult to rationalize. And then you go into the factor that EVs are in trouble. So I don't know, man. And Rivian stock says it all. You know, I mean, yeah, you're you're, you know, up on a five day. But you put this thing on a three-year weekly. My goodness, man! Is that does the math? Yeah, that encapsulated it all. And I remember when this went public, Jacob, and I was joking. They were pre-revenue, yes. pushing this thing out to the public at like a hundred billion dollars or something <laughs> yes, like that. Yes, I do remember this. Yeah. And you know, not 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 rocket science. That guess what? It didn't play out like they thought. You got charts up here that pushed 179. You know, you came in. It was a straight drop, and we're at, you know eight to ten bucks right now for Rivian. So yeah, that's that's. You know, it doesn't mean they're going away as a business. They're great vehicles, but boy, they are in trouble, man, for sure. So, Just like the whole industry is right now. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. And they, there is something, and <clears throat> for some reason, this isn't being pushed in such a large way. They are attempting to try to develop a new line that will come out in 2026. That is going to, because what you're saying is so true, right? People, you, you want the citizens to get into electric vehicles. You want to do this. A 75000 baseline price point is absurd. I, for the yeah. common person, you're not getting to that. I would argue even this price point for, like, you know, maybe lower middle class people is even kind of outside of it. But they, they're they coming out with Bonkers, an R2 that, yeah. is the $45,000, what they're saying they're going to do. Now, I might be, you know, once bitten, twice shy from from Tesla, right, who said they're going to make yeah. this vehicle that's going to. So I'm, I'm not sure. And this is still two years out. Now, the question is, is how much less advanced is this if they come out with it right and it is good right yes is it going to be anywhere near their r1s you know probably not right sure. because you have a thirty thousand dollar discount on the msrp right. but what's going to be the difference are they going to be as beautiful right yeah and i get concerned too that the way that they push these down right is maybe going to places like china which is not a big issue you know that's fine sure. i mean it's competition but are their cars as good is this somehow yeah. going to get hit in some capacity? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. if this can pull through for Rivian, and again, this is so far out and it's not being spoken about that much. But if it comes through and, and your average person can finally get access to a Rivian, well, that's interesting. And, and we might have some good stuff for the stock. But but as you're saying, as it stands now with their new stuff coming out at 75000 even up to 100 on the deluxe packages, you know, they're they're going to maintain some some issues, I would say. So. You know, it's, 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 and listen, I got a BMW. I love it. Okay. It's five yeah. years old though. I bought it used yeah. as well. And yeah. it was used, I think a year. I got a great deal in terms of it was just used enough. Had like 12,000 miles, kind of a sweet spot. You love avoid it. that first drop off, off of yeah. the, the lot. Right. But so difficult to, and I just, I always talk about this Kia Telluride because I look at it myself. I mean, I yes. think dollar for dollar, it's one of the best vehicles out there, Kia. And I'm not saying it's the best vehicle, but in terms of value, right? It's one of the best vehicles, dollar for dollar, and what you're getting. And I've often looked at them because, man, you know, spending money on a car is just lighting money on fire many times. And when we start talking <laughs> yeah. about seventy to a hundred thousand dollars, man, I mean, I just, just, just while you were talking, Jacob, I was like, what are used Kias running that are that are good used? Okay, I'm talking like within a couple of years old, twenty to thirty thousand miles. What are we looking at? You're looking at thirty thousand dollars, man, for a great vehicle, two yeah. years old, twenty thousand miles, and you got a car for thirty grand. Okay, how? That's where my brain goes bonkers in terms of like, I can't do it, man. I can't light, you know, 50 to $70,000 on for fire what? Right. for what it's not, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not getting a clunker. Okay. Yeah. You're getting a great vehicle, man. That's two years old with 20,000 miles. You're getting it for $30,000. Okay. And yeah, it's not some luxury EV. I get it. Okay. But these are, these are, you know, SUVs. Some of them got three rows in there. They're, they're good vehicles. So that's, that's, you can find decent vehicles at a decent price right now, which is why it's so hard pressed, I think, to rationalize. I mean, this car market, man. And, yes. you know, when you start talking about a hundred thousand bucks for a car, and, you know, like I said, man, there are decent houses, especially around me where I am, for 300 grand. I can't rationalize a car that's going to be worthless in five to seven years for 100 grand versus a, car, a house for 300 grand. My brain, I don't think I can sign that line and, and totally feel good agree. about it, you know? And that's, and so, like you said, can they get to that number? Because if they get to 45,000, that puts them in the ballpark with what I just pulled up. And that's a different conversation. But I don't can know they if they do can. It, <laughs> that's, can they do it where yeah. it's a decent vehicle, right? Where it's right. not, I mean, we've seen, because Tesla, I agree, man, I've seen some, uh, I'd be hard 
breast. And I was looking at Teslas even five years ago when I bought that BMW. And the quality alone, folks, of a Tesla is suspect, to put yes. it in lack of a yes. better term right now, yes. um, especially for what you're paying. So, yeah, pretty interesting. I mean, they even look at this market, man. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no. I'm only down single digits. Yeah, I yeah, know. I know. Crazy, points. right? S&P claws it back. We'll see where we finish, but pretty remarkable. Yeah. And the dollar is trading and trying to get it right now. Yeah, okay, a little higher in the trading range, 104.80, yeah. but we'll see how that plays out. Well, Tommy will be Let's look back. at those yeah. when we get back, because yeah. I think Absolutely. yields in the dollar, there's no recoil there, but the market recoil it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, Tommy. Well, we got a short little segment. What are we looking at? So how about, I love the conversation in the den, our man Duncan Steve, but similar yeah. action, that Volkswagen Tiguan, super similar conversation, great vehicle. Congrats, yeah. Steve. 27500 bucks, man, for a 2023 yeah. model with a third row for an SUV that gets great gas mileage. I mean, that's where it's like, man, that's exactly the, the right. vehicle that I'm talking about in the same conversation <laughs> because those are great vehicles. Volkswagen, you know, reliable, great vehicles. Um as well and so yeah just continuing that conversation that one it just compares a lot i think with the same thing that kia telluride great suvs three rows affordable prices how do you spend 70 to 100 grand right now and yeah you maybe you can you know if you got listen if you got like five kids man and you're running around to activities every single day and you 
not a lot of people really need it. I would love it. Okay, don't get me wrong, man. I mean, one of my ideal cars is that GMC Yukon Denali. Man, I love those. They're just <laughs> yeah. beautiful. Um, but they're a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, I love houses too. That are, that are, you know. Yeah, it's like, right. No, the, definitely. That's the deal. Um, and hey, I got to bring it up. And you know, unfortunately, everything gets political, man. But these tax cuts, as we, it's just yes. bonkers. Some of these numbers, man. So the story out here, this on Bloomberg, the Trump tax cut renewal, it's winning Wall Street. Surprise, surprise. $4.6 trillion It's what it's going to cost over the next 10 years. $4.6 trillion. I do not understand how that makes any sense. When these were passed, it was talked about that it would pay for itself. I don't know how you reasonably make that argument. I mean, maybe you get one estimate here is 1% to 14% is right. kind of the growth that might account for it. But, you know, it's got to come from both sides, folks, okay? And you can't just throw in tax cuts for five trillion dollars and then argue that we you know got to cut the spending it's got to cut from both both sides and that number just blows me away as somebody with a three-year-old who who needs you know government to be fiscally sound i'm all on board i do not understand the party of fiscal responsibility which is supposed to be republican 4.6 trillion dollars over 10 years there's my soapbox anyway <laughs> i just real? don't get no. it man it's it's quite a number, man. When we're talking about four point six trillion dollars over ten years, um, when the company, you know, anyway, look at this market, man. It is on fire. We're only <laughs> yeah, nine, we're coming right points. back. Seriously, thanks, thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks Jake. for having me on, Tommy. It, Love it always. always. Pleasure, folks. Stay tuned, man. All right. Take care. Take care.